Alright, let's give this thing a try. Well, it's certainly better. Most of your um, testing equipment will not be rated to test an output from a microwave oven transformer. G'day legends, welcome back to another Electrician Reacts and this is part 9 in the series. We are almost at 10 guys. So, I usually get a lot of my suggestions from my community and one that continues to pop up is Styro Pyro. Now I had never heard of this guy before and I checked out his channel before. He looks pretty gnarly. A, a lot of lasers, I believe. So I'm going to react to him today. But before I get started, I would love it if you could hit that support channel button. It's the one that actually says subscribe. And if you've watched my videos before, the reason that I call it support channel is because my videos should really go out to my subscribers, but apparently the vast majority of you are not subscribed. So I have no idea what this subscribe button does, but honestly, it does help me get motivated to make more of these React videos. So also, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button as well. But without further ado, let's just get straight into Styro Pyro. Okay, so here we are over on Styro Pyro's page. Um, he seems to like lasers a lot. So I, I have to confess, I don't know a lot about lasers. I know they can be incredibly dangerous if you use them and they are way too powerful. So let's, let's just see. I mean, some of you have said, um, what about his Tesla stuff here? I mean, I see a lot of plasma balls, which is kind of like a Tesla coil. So... Let's just type in, see if there's any Tesla. Oh, that's not how you spell Tesla. Uh, let's just go with the top one. I recently got a deal on some plasma globes on eBay. And while they are pretty neat, I feel like with the right modifications, they could be a lot cooler. <laughs> now I have a general rule that before I go tearing into stuff, I like to at least try the original product. Now, what can you do with a plasma globe? Well, for one, if you put your hand on it like this, you get a little arc that goes up to your hand, which is pretty cool, but, I mean, honestly, this isn't going to keep me entertained for that long. Like, the thing isn't even a fire hazard. Is that too much to ask for a consumer electronics? <laughs> now, luckily, this whole fire hazard issue mm. can be simply solved with just a roll of aluminum foil. But first, a warning. The craziness this is probably about to unfold over the next 10 minutes or so. With I suspect what he's going to try and do is build up some sort of capacitance between like the arc and the glass uh, there. So this should be good. Yeah, completely for educational purposes. In fact, if you were to try any of this stuff at home, you'd probably die. So yeah, please don't do this. At home. <laughs> a piece of aluminum foil on top capacitively couples to that inner electrode. And now yeah. you can see it can draw more current. Now you can even pull a little arc from the surface, which, which is pretty nifty. <laughs> what? Now I wonder what it feels like on my finger. Ooh, <laughs> it actually tickles. Oh, wow. It's that is, so I'm super interested to know how much voltage is actually being produced in sort of that capacitive state because it'd have to be like thousands of volts to be able to arc like that. That's, that's unreal. It's cool drawing an arc from my finger. All right, now it's time for a more important test and that's whether it can burn stuff. So here I have a match. And uh, yeah, it won't be earthed out doesn't properly. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. anything. So I cover the match in aluminum foil. That way, uh, the uh, foil touches me and can complete the uh, circuit through ground. So yeah. let's see if it lights the match. It's arcing. Not quite lighting yet. One eternity later. <laughs> yes, there it goes. Sweet. That was actually pretty cool. That is unreal. All right, now I'm bored. This thing needs a lot more power. <laughs> so I'm gonna tear it apart. So I went ahead and tore down that plasma globe and, and what can I say? I'm not impressed with this driver. I feel like Nikola Tesla, who actually invented the plasma globe, would be rolling in his grave if he saw this driver. <laughs> he was doing this stuff over a hundred years ago. And this stuff was way better than this puny little thing. So how do we make this thing stronger? Well, the dumb way would be to just feed higher voltage into the thing, but that's probably just going to blow the timer before yeah, anything exactly. interesting happens. So I guess the next best option is to uh, feed a higher voltage into just that transistor itself. Or even better, use this transistor as an amplifier to feed an even bigger transistor and then dump even higher, higher voltage into that. Man, I feel like this scene does such a great job of giving off the essence of hobby electronics. So let's dive right into this, because what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> start feeding a little bit of voltage there. And I like that he's oh, using oh, a very over. 
What's going on there? So apparently... Uh, he's using a variac rather than just like applying like a set voltage. So at least he knows that um, he can control what's going into it rather than blowing it up straight away. Apparently due to my sloppy wiring, I ended up frying this little power transistor. But it's not like it really mattered in the first place. So now I just have the output of the 555 directly driving the gate of that MOSFET. So let's give this another go. Oh, sweet. Oh, something broke. Did it really fry that easily? No. Mm. It's trying to go. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, look at that. I love when that happens. Let <laughs> out the magic smoke. This project has been a great reminder of how much I suck at electronics. <laughs> so I'm going to say screw this driver. I love this guy. <laughs> and instead use a ZVS driver, which is much better. And also use a flyback transformer that's at least ten times bigger. Not even the slightest glow? So that's how it's going to be, is it? <laughs> you know, I guess it wasn't really the plasma globe's fault. <sighs> it's probably the built-in rectifier inside that flyback transformer that's preventing me from getting nice arcs in the globe. Wow. All right, screw this. I'm breaking out my massively overdriven car ignition coils. Because if this doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Oh, no way! All right, let's give this thing a try. Well, it's certainly better. Whoa! So the noise he, is definitely an added bonus. So he's connected up like one each end to one of those um, plasma globes, so it arcs through it. I'm assuming that's what he's doing. He's doing. But I still can't say I'm that impressed. Like there aren't even arcs I'm shooting impressed. out of the glass. <laughs> out of the I glass. think I can still do a lot better. Now, I'm sure if I were to drive those coils even harder, I could make the globe a little bit brighter, but really at that point I'm just grasping for straws because what I really want is to draw the maximum of power I can possibly get from my electrical socket. I want giant arcs of electricity to shoot directly out of the glass. <laughs> I want a million volts to come from my driver to feed into the globe. Somebody like me generate a million volts. Well, in fact, I don't need any fancy ITVTs or field effects. He's going to use a mod. In fact, I don't need silicon at all. What I do need are microwave ovens. Yeah. Microwaves are full of parts that are useful for the electronics hobbyists and can be sourced for cheap or even sometimes free. So let's tear this thing down. Now I should point out that nobody without extensive electronics experience should ever go poking around in a microwave oven. Reason being, you touch the output of this while it's live, you're dead. Oh yeah, okay, so most of your um, testing equipment will not be rated to test an output from a microwave oven transformer. So they can be around anywhere from like 2,000 to 2,800 volt output. So just just be really careful when you're ripping any of these parts out. They, you know, like high voltage is high voltage. It's dangerous. So just don't don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. You touch this without discharging it first. You're dead. Here's the cap. You yeah. break this and inhale the dust. And before long, borreliosis comes creeping in, slowly <laughs> suffocating you and sucking every bit That's of life the out of you until finally you're dead. Anyway, the main thing that I'm looking for is this transformer here. Now, unfortunately, it only does a little over 2,000 volts. There you go. But luckily, I can string a few of them together for higher voltages. Oh, but I'm going to need more microwaves. This is gnarly as, man. Like, I... Oh. Yeah, that's what... Wow. <laughs> I need transformers with relatively similar electrical characteristics. That way they don't fight each other when chained together. Now I found four that match each other quite nicely, and I wired the secondaries in series and the primaries in parallel, and of course accounting for phasing. Now if you try to chain any more than four of these together, then the voltage is just going to blow through the windings on the secondary. But even at just four, this can be an issue. So to prevent this, I mounted them in these ammo cans here, and then I submerged them in mineral oil. Now this arrangement gives a voltage of about 10,000 volts, which is certainly impressive, but still off by a factor of 100 of what we actually want. So now what? Well, this is where we get to look back at the ideas of Nikola Tesla. Uh, not that one. And definitely not that one. He didn't even work on that. Can we just stop it with this whole free energy conspiracy already? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. That one. The magnifying transmitter. 
or even better, the modern day equivalent, which is the aptly named Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is a type of step-up transformer, in which the primary and secondary sides form tank circuits, and they're tuned so that they resonate at the same frequency. Yeah, they're the resonance circuit. I spoke about this in one of the other videos that I well had. Well in excess of a million volts. Now luckily, many of the materials needed <laughs> for a Tesla coil can actually be found at a hardware store. For my primary coil, I use 3 8 inch copper refrigeration no tubing way. as the conductor. Now a white conductor is really important because the skin effect makes thinner wire quite resistive at radio frequencies. Well, I spoke about uh, the skin effect on one of Electro Boom React videos, and I'll leave a card above. But essentially, like at higher frequencies, the skin effect is going to propagate outside of whatever it's conducting. So you, your cable or something like that and your body, it will propagate on the outside and potentially not hurt as much. So that's what he means. I made some mounts out of acrylic to hold the primary windings in place. And that then mounted so it cool. here on this uh, coffee table. On the primary side, I needed a tank capacitor rated for the grueling high voltage, high current operating conditions of a multi-kilowatt Tesla coil. But off the shelf, these are very expensive. Wow. Now, some people make their own capacitors out of things like beer bottles and foil, but these tend to be quite lossy. I ended up meeting mm. the middle by building a bank of smaller pulse capacitors. What he potentially means by quite lossy, like um, what he was referencing there back um, with the bottles. These are very expensive. Now, some people make their own capacitors out of... Yeah, they're um, often called Leyden jars. They were like one of the first type of capacitors ever created. And uh, what he says about losses is that the electrolyte inside, it's just, it's just not uh, close enough to the conductors, the anode and the cathode to actually, you know, get enough um, a performance out of them. So, yeah, he's, he's right. He, what is, how is he going to make things one? Things like beer bottles and foil, but these tend to be quite lossy. I ended up meeting the middle by building a bank of smaller pulse capacitors, yeah. which gives great performance at a much lower cost. Oh. And here's the completed driver. It definitely looks terrifying. And I went ahead and added some warning stickers there, just to keep people safe. <laughs> also, one thing I want to point out is, I added 10 of these microwave oven capacitors here to act as a uh, capacitive ballast. And then over here I have my uh, spark gap mounted, and there's my capacitor bank. So yeah, I guess we're ready to try this thing out. Now first wow, I want to test that this is Tesla so coil cool. Without the plasma globe on top. That way I can compare it to the original plasma globe driver. Because the plasma globe driver doesn't even make any visible corona when it's ran in open air. So let's see if this Tesla coil is any different. Alright, here we go. Man, why do we even do this kind of stuff? <laughs> oh, he's got an outside, nice. Yes, that is unreal. It's hard to convey just how loud that spark gap actually is. So the new plasma globe driver clearly works, and it actually produces <laughs> sparks in midair unlike the old driver. But I guess that was expected considering this new driver draws 350 times as much power as the old one. There, now it's art. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't explode on the very first run. <laughs> that is nuts. Check out those amazing patterns. But still, though, it's not shooting arcs out of the glass. But I think I can fix this. What? Just like I did earlier, oh, yeah. I'm going to stick some aluminum foil on top. That way it capacitively couples to the top of the coil. And it's funny because at these frequencies, whatever capacitance that this arrangement has is going to have an incredibly low impedance. So the arc should just shoot straight through the globe. I hope you can stick it on. It's going to blow away. <laughs> I can't convey... How much power is coming out of this thing? Don't try and recreate anything like this at home. If you stand next to that, that is going to arc directly to your body and go back down to earth. Man, that is unreal. Ah, uh, yes. There's that wonderful arc that I was after. It shoots two feet out of the top of the globe, which I think is pretty impressive. But maybe could we do even better if we add more foil to the thing? I used aluminum tape this time instead of foil because it sticks to the sides better. 
Now this time I actually have five pieces as opposed to one. So let's see how this thing performs. Oh, look how bright it is. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. You know, it's funny. You'd think after all the time I just spent building this new driver, I would have remembered to actually attach the plasma globe to the thing. <laughs> but as they say, science can't move forward without breaking some omelets or whatever. What I stuck legend. another globe on the driver, and this time used some zip ties to keep it held down. Now for my next experiment, I want to see if I could use this thing to remotely power up another plasma globe. Yes! <laughs> It's not coming from the actual other plasma globe, though. Obviously, the path of least resistance, right? That's amazing, Try doing though. that with an off-the-shelf plasma globe. <laughs> Let's give that a try with some fluorescent tube lights, a.k.a. Oh, the much less off. awesome plasma globe equivalent. You can actually do something like this. You may have seen that you can grab one of these fluorescent globes and go under like HV towers. If they're high enough voltage, you'll get enough like permeating um, electromagnetic field uh, and, and it should come out and actually glow a little bit. That's unreal. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up, but that is it for Styro Pyro. Thank you so much for introducing me to him. He's got some really, really cool stuff. I would highly recommend going over and subscribing, supporting his channel, and then also going over to his Patreon if you want to give him some support because a lot of these videos would cost a lot of money and time to create. So if you're watching these, it would just be really, really nice for the creators to get something back. But until next time, guys, please don't recreate anything that he has done. It is super, super dangerous.